This is Play by Playcast. Is that faster than a greyhound? The podcast about play by play guys. For play by play guys, I am told a play by play guy. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Now, here's the host of Play by Play Cast, Todd Bodet. <laughs> Wait, the Motel 6 guy? We'll leave the light on for you. No, Joel Godet. Joe Godet. Joel. Joe. Joel? Joel, with an L. Okay, here's your host, Joel Godet. Don't worry, nobody's listening anyway. Right on lucky. Low snap. He picks it up. Pressure for the egg. Looking, sets it, fires, swapped away! The Frogs have done it in the Alamo City! And short side pitch, Wesley, clear out, block, touchdown, TCU! All right, back at it here on a Friday. Thanks, as always, for the download, the stream, the subscription. If you've had the opportunity to click that little subscribe button, however you may be listening to this, be it on iTunes or Stitcher or any other way, you've found to listen to this on the internet uh thanks as always my appreciation for joining us here on play-by-play cast my name is joel godette i'm the play-by-play voice at ball state university in muncie indiana and this is the podcast about play-by-play broadcasters for play-by-play broadcasters hosted by a play-by-play broadcaster really good numbers on last week's episode with mike breen the television voice of the new york knicks of course the nba finals as well uh, if you have listened to that one, uh, thanks for, for joining us again this week. If you have not, scroll back through the archives, check out the conversation with Mike Breen from last week. Uh, personally, one of my favorite ones we've had on the pod. Um, not to say anything of the, the 79 episodes we had before that, um, but I, I really enjoyed our conversation last week with Mike Breen. Uh, ranging from, I mean, the origins of sports talk radio uh, when he was in New York and kind of on the up and up in his career to even at, at his level, how a guy like Mike Breen critiques himself and gets critiqued and the way that he continues to improve and try to improve on a night in and night out basis. Uh, episode 79 was Len Casper of the Chicago Cubs. Jake Zivin of the Portland Timbers gives us a soccer feel for episode 78. And uh, John Shambi was uh, episode 77 from ESPN. You can scroll back through those archives as always. And then find us on Twitter at PXPCast. I am on Facebook at Joel PXP, or you can shoot me an email as well, jgodett at bsu.edu, or find me on Twitter at Joel Godet. Our guest this week on our final episode of 2017, which is crazy. Happy New Year's, by the way. Happy New Year. It's not Happy New Year's. I mean, conceivably, there are multiple new years in all of our futures, hopefully. Um, but but happy new year to all of you. Uh, it will be 2018, the next time we sit down and chat on this podcast. Uh, our final guest of 2017 is the voice of the TCU Horned Frogs. Brian Estridge just had a heck of a season. Really good football year, and uh, TCU basketball, I believe, is, of this recording is still undefeated. Probably should have known that before I committed to saying it. Uh, but hold the phone. Uh, yeah, 12 and 0. 12 and 0. I, I knew they were last night, and for some reason I had this moment of panic that they might have played. Um, <laughs> but a uh, heck of a start for Jamie Dixon's basketball team as well. Uh, so it's it's been a pretty good year to be Brian Estridge. But that's not all that Brian Estridge does, and that's why he is uh, a super interesting guy to have on the podcast this week. Uh, you know, there is such a... And, and it's gone on for years, but particularly recently, uh, such this emphasis on sticking to sports in what we do as sports announcers. Uh, anytime somebody says something or tweets something or makes a remark that is not like, you know, Seton Hall is one of the more efficient offenses in the country. I don't know if that's true. I'm just picking a school out of out of out of a hat, um, you know. Kentucky is is the best, you know, wins above replacement. I'm just making things up now. But anytime we say something that is not sports related, there's that immediate backlash of like, well, stick to sports. What do you know? Um, and and my thought on that, and I and we've mentioned this on the pod earlier, is there there's an interesting line to toe there because certainly people come to all of us for sports first and foremost. But like nobody tells the 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 gardener to stick to gardening. 
Like it just doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't walk past the gardener and he says, beautiful day. You, go, you know what? Stick to the flowers. Like it's, it's not something that happens. Uh, so I think it's interesting when you come across somebody like Brian Estridge, who not only is the radio voice of the TCU Horn Frogs, but is also a talk show host on the number one news talker in town. Like, I, we had Grant Napier on a couple of weeks ago from the Sacramento Kings. He's a talk show host about sports in Sacramento. Brian Estridge is a talk show host about not sports. Like, the definition of not sticking to sports is Brian Estridge. And uh, on the podcast this week, interesting conversation about drawing that line uh, and, and how he how he lives that every day because he, he is the quintessential where, where, where people could say stick to sports, but he doesn't, and he thrives in that role. So we'll get into that. We'll get into uh, his path career-wise, getting him to TCU, because while he has a Big 12 job now, he did not take a Big 12 job when he got the job at TCU. Um, he went there under much different circumstances as an athletic department and has kind of been there as the athletic department has grown and risen to national prominence. So um, interesting kind of how his career path uh, has taken him. And then also we'll talk about uh, a project that Brian has uh, called Red Voice Productions. You know, we, we all sit here and, 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 and are broadcasters, and some of us are producers and board ops and engineers for ourselves and for other people. Um, we do all that side of stuff. And some of us sell. We, we do the advertising. I would wager a guess very few people listening to this podcast are also the owners of the networks that do the games. <laughs> Particularly at like the Division One FBS bowl level. Brian Estridge produces bowl games on national networks on the radio for Red Voice Productions. It's his own company. Not only does he call games at the Division One level at TCU, and not only is he a news talk host in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, but but he also produces bowl games on a national network and is responsible for, like, the whole kahuna. Put up his own money from the beginning and said, I got this. Let's go. Uh, which I thought was intriguing as well. So we'll talk kind of the, the side of being a play-by-play -play broadcaster but also being uh, a small business owner, really, and, uh, and, and controlling that side of several broadcasts this time of year. Busy time of year and a good time of year to be Brian Estridge. And uh, with that in mind, thrilled that he took the time uh, to join us on the podcast here this week. So Brian Estridge from the TCU Horned Frogs and also from WBAP in Dallas-Fort Worth and also from Red Voice Productions is our guest this week on Play by Play Cast. Join us as we don't to stick to sports. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, yeah, just as long as you don't share it with my wife. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I uh, I do the play-by-play -play for TCU, so that means football, men's basketball, do their coaches' shows, host their TV shows, kind of serve as their director of broadcasting. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to that, I do a morning radio show in Dallas uh, at WBAP, which is a big news talker here in town, uh, and that's uh, kind of a full-service morning show: news, weather, traffic, sports, uh, politics. Uh, so kind of a kind of it's kind of a full service slash talk show in the morning. So that's from five to nine and then uh, TCU during the week. And then in addition to that, I've got a company, Red Voice Productions, um, which um, partnered up with a group out of uh, West Virginia called Pikewood Sports. And we um, we put together a group called Game Day Radio that uh, uh, produces uh, nine events nationally. Uh, for radio distribution uh, uh, on a national platform of a uh, you know, network of radio stations, terrestrial stations, and also uh, satellite via XM and uh, Sirius. And then, of course, the tune-in component that everybody's big on now. That's so so in the, the, of those nine events, eight of those are college football bowl games. So obviously the last two weeks in December are uh, busiest part of my life, which is okay. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I do. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's a couple of other little things that we – we look at periodically during the year to try to make sure we stay busy <laughs> just in case. Um, why? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Here, here's a blunt answer. And I, I don't mean this to sound, uh, um, I don't, I don't mean this to sound cocky or conceited, but one day I want to be the man instead of work for the man. Sure. Does that makes sense. No, that's um, not conceited and, at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, you know, that was my Ric Flair line. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I just, uh, it's one of those where, um, uh, 
I, I, th I think that, um, uh, you know, I've uh, been in the business now for 25 plus years, and I, I think there's some expertise that I can lend to it. And I think there's a way to monetize uh, that experience and that and that expertise. And so uh, um, I think there's uh, I also think there's a void out there. Uh, you know, I, you don't have to be uh, ESP in the world, but, uh, you, you know, there, I think there's a void that can be filled with some live production, which is what I love and what I enjoy. And so I, I think we're going to try to fill that. I want to double back to that in a little bit um, and kind of yeah. delve deeper a, a little bit into it. But I, I want to cover a, a couple broader bases uh, off yeah. the top. And, and the, the, I guess the biggest one, and I, and I think I kind of envy you in, in this way in terms of, I mean, I know you went to App State for political science. I know you've worked in campaigns before. The fact right. that you do a morning show that gets to kind of reach its tentacles into a lot of different areas. Um, do you just like the fact that you, you you don't have to stick to sports in yeah, your, in your yeah, life, in your profession? I'm glad you recognize that because that, um, uh, you know, I, I kind of live in two different worlds and I have passion uh, uh, for both of them. And so when uh, I, I was doing an afternoon uh, show on ESPN radio here in Dallas and did that for six or seven years, and it was great uh, and we were successful and uh, ratings were solid. But then BAP approached me about coming to do the morning show on the news talker as my contract was winding down. And I thought to myself, you know what, this would be really good for my brain uh, to think about something than, else other than sports and i love sports and it's you know we kind of live in the toy uh the uh, toy department of the world uh <laughs> in, in sports but i thought you know what let's um let's grow up a little bit and let and, and let's let's challenge ourselves and, let, and let's uh let's spend some time on on something other than that. now i still get to spend a ton of time in sports obviously with the tcu stuff but politics has always been uh of interest to, uh, to me and m my mother's uh an elected official in South Carolina and has been elected five times. I've had a chance to run her campaigns. So I worked on other campaigns, and, you know, thought that's something that I wanted to do. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I'm glad you recognize that because I think all too often we get pigeonholed as, oh, he's just a, you know, a sports radio guy and that's all he knows. But uh, when actuality, I probably at this stage of, my, of life, I know a little bit more about politics than I probably I, I could I could tell I I got a better chance of, of uh, running down all the congressmen from Texas than I do uh, the Eastern Division of the NBA uh, as far as leaders are concerned. So, how do you balance the the inevitable? Like I, I feel like you it, it, you could tick off a sports fan, or you could you know I don't like that he does this, or I don't like that he does that. And how do you toe the line of being able to be everything to everybody uh, in, in that quest to to satisfy you know yourself? And that's something I wish we could all do. Yeah, that's a good point because, they, you know, a sports fan may hold it – a TCU fan could hold it against me that I have, a, you know, a certain view on a certain issue. Is that what you're asking? Sure. I, 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 could, I could see that. Uh, I just try to be true. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, uh, um, I don't try to be offensive. I don't try to be uh, – I, I don't try to be demanding. I don't try to be one of those that is trying to convince you to change your mind. What I'm going to try to do is be principled, uh, try to be true to myself, uh, and, and try to not uh, deliver with a filter. I, I, I think it's better off if you know where I stand and why I stand in, on, on a certain position or in a certain way than for you to be guessing. And uh, I, I just think I, I respect, I know I respect people. You know, Charles Barkley and I don't agree on every issue, but I respect the heck out of Charles Barkley that you know where he stands. Sure. Uh, you know, that uh, that he he speaks truth. He speaks common sense. He speaks principled. Uh, you know, now his principles and mine may be a little different on some subjects. And that's good. That's OK. That doesn't mean I respect him any less. And, and that's all I ask out of people is, hey, listen to where I'm coming from. Listen to what I'm basing this on uh, and then judge. Me. Uh, and, uh, and and that's all you can ask. I think. How do you branch out in, into those different ways? And, and, and I'm, I'm talking about, I mean, go back to the very beginning for me. When you decided, like, hey, I'm getting into play-by-play -play and um, where that route took you, how you also kind of at the same time were able to, to have multiple career, career goals that take you to different places of the country where you've kind of, I want to say, have to have to the reset button every time, but you're going to a new market, you're going to a new sure. place for one thing and then trying to do the other stuff in addition to that as well. I think you got to pour your heart and soul into it. I'll be honest with you. I think that's what that, what I tried to do. And I think you got to dive right into communities and be involved in the community. And I think that you've got to develop a trust with those folks. But then I think, you know, in meeting people, and we're fortunate in our jobs and that we get to meet a ton of people. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I try to be a really good listener and see what they're all about and see what they do. But then I'm also always working to connect people. 
you know, uh, I, I'm one of those guys that, um, that I think you, you have to be that kind of guy. You can't be one that's, you know, in it just for you. You know, uh, I, I kind of I, I wear a bracelet around uh, Philippians 2, 3. And Philippians 2, 3 talks about uh, never doing anything in conceit. You know, always being humble and putting others first. And what I, what I try to do is, uh, and, and it can be something simple, simple like a buddy of mine saying, you know, I'm thinking about getting my wife a hot tub for Christmas. Well, in my mind, I have filed away. I got a buddy who's a wholesaler for a, for a hot tub company. Let me put you in touch with him. You know, that's the kind of thing that I do. That I and, and it's interesting you bring it up because my wife is all, you know, she hears my conversations and she's always like, you know, you really should figure out a way to monetize that. And I said, <laughs> no, you know, I said, my return comes back in making that guy happy. And then one day I may need him for something. And, uh, and I think that's what it's all about. I think that's what being a good friend and a humble servant is all about and, and just trying to help people. And uh, so that's, that's kind of where I come from on that. And uh, I, I think once you dive deep into communities and dive deep into people, doors start to open and opportunities start to, to show them you can really kind of branch out and, as you said, and become divergent in, in, what, in what you're doing. Let's talk a little bit about the sports side of it, though. Um, obviously, you've been at TCU now for is, – is this 20 years? Yeah, this is year 20. It's hard to believe. I know I didn't think I could do anything for 20 years. <laughs> how did you uh, How did you wind up there? And, um, and great I, story. Because uh, at the time, ahead. too, uh, you know, it, it wasn't – it's not a Big 12 school when you took that job. It's a, it's right. a whack no. job. So yeah. talk to me about moving to Texas, kind of upending – and you were in Ohio at the time and, and making that jump. I was when I was at Appalachian State. I graduated from Appalachian State and spent five, four or five or six years there as an uh, athletic department employee in the play-by-play -play voice. And kind of built the network up and got it started internally. And then uh, an opportunity came uh, to me in Miami of Ohio with an athletic director that I'd known from his days in the ACC and really respected the hound out of. And that was a guy named Eric Hyman. Uh, and I was still a young guy. I was uh, I'm trying to think here. I just got married and. Um, so I was still looking for that next career move because, unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes guys get pegged in jobs. And I'd been at Appalachian for five or six years. And at the time, Appalachian was still a one double A job or FCS. And um, because of that, I, I just kind of felt like I was getting I was getting labeled as an FCS guy. And, and until you make that move and you're willing to take a chance, you know, sometimes you, you kind of get stuck there. And so I said, you know what, Miami, Ohio, it's going to be me. I, uh, I flew up and interviewed with him. Uh, fell in love with the head football coach who is still one of my favorite people to this day, even though he's passed. And Randy Walker was fortunate enough to work with him and developed an amazing relationship with him. Still, I mean, I, you know, he was, he was a terrific mentor to me, became a good friend. And he, along with Charlie Coles, who was a basketball coach and there, I'm an athletic director where I mean, they were jewels uh, to be able to work with them in Miami. And we had some success when I was there, although I was only there for one year because uh, Eric soon became the athletic director at TCU. Uh, and I was fortunate enough that he uh, he asked me to come join him at, at TCU in Fort Worth. And uh, on the weekend, it's 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 a great story. On the weekend that I flew down to Fort Worth to to quote unquote interview for the job, meet the other staff members. Uh, my wife and I flew here uh, for this interview, and uh, on a Friday and Saturday, and then Saturday night we flew to Nashville and interviewed for the same job at Vanderbilt. Uh, and uh, Todd Turner was the athletic director at Vanderbilt at the time. And, uh, you know, in, enjoyed my time there in Nashville on that on that uh, uh, visit. And uh, but then we had a choice to make, and then Todd made the choice for us and said he was going to uh, hire Joe Fisher as the play-by-play -play voice of Vanderbilt, who was a TV guy there in Nashville. And it it worked out perfect. Joe and I become great friends, and uh, he does a terrific job there at Vandy. And that's a perfect job for him, and and the TCU jobs become the perfect job for me. I uh, got lucky, came down here and uh, moved my fa my wife at the time. Uh, my two kids have been born here in Texas, so they're Texans. Uh, and we've lived here longer uh, than anywhere else in, in, in our lives. So this is home now. Uh, and so it was, it was it was kind of a it was kind of a whole bunch of luck falling into place. And then, uh, you know, uh, experienced some success when, once we got in. You're right. I mean, this was a whack school. This was a whack job. Uh, and I don't mean it in the, you know, any kind of slang <laughs> way. Uh, it was in the Western Athletic Conference. And, you know, I can remember to this day being on a golf course at a TCU golf event and us getting the phone call that we had gotten in the Conference USA and how big of a deal that was at TCU. Because the Conference USA at the time was Louisville and Cincinnati. 
Marquette, DePaul. I mean, it, it was a, it was a terrific basketball league, especially and a quality football league too. And that was a big deal. So we got the move, made the move to Conference USA, and we thought we had hit a home run there. Uh, and then after a few years in Conference USA, uh, things were starting to shake up a little bit. You can kind of tell that. And uh, we made the move to the Mountain West. And that, we thought that was a, that's a really big deal. You know, you got BYU and Utah and later on added Boise State. And you got Air Force in there. And it's just some great places. It's the best travel league in the country. Uh, it's some institutions that are about the right things. And so we, we did that and thought, you know what, this is this is really cool. Uh and then later on, when Chris Delconti becomes athletic director, we get the call to go to the Big 12. And now you're thinking, now this is really cool, <laughs> you know. Uh, and in between, you know, we were in the Big East for a cup of coffee. Uh, so, I mean, it's been fun. It's been a great journey. TCU's finally where they need to be, which is in the Big 12. And I think, uh, you know, it took a lot of a lot of work and a lot of people dedicated to the program. But I think back on it now, leaving my Ohio in the MAC and now ending up uh, 20 years later at a Big 12 school at TCU, it's uh, – it's been kind of a dream come true, you know. Um, let me take you back a little bit for for people that yeah. don't know who Charlie Coles is. Uh, go YouTube him. <laughs> um, what's your uh, What's your best Charlie Coles anecdote from a year working with him? Yeah, uh, well, that's incredible. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them. One is, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll never forget the first time I was with him doing a coach's show, and he ordered a pizza. Okay, <laughs> we were sitting there, and he and he orders a pizza, and he says, uh, "Let's." Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's talking to the, uh, he's talking to the waitress and he said, I want some green peppers. I want some onions. Uh, I don't want any meat, uh, and no cheese. And I looked at him and I said, coach, well, that's not really pizza. That's bread. You know, if it doesn't have any cheese or doesn't have any, uh, uh, meat on it. And he looked at me, he says, uh, Brian, that's a Charlie Cole's pizza. <laughs> I said, okay, I got you. Uh, but, uh, he was, you know, it was phenomenal. It was, uh, I tell you how I, I, uh, I um, was calling a game at Western Michigan that we were playing in. Um, it was late in the year. May have we, I was trying to think about this. It may have been a first round MAC tourney game. Okay, remember the MAC, and I don't know if they still do that. Played the first round at the home side of the higher seat. Correct. Yeah. Still yeah. do. Yeah. And so yeah. Okay. Good. So we're at uh, we're at Western Michigan. Bob. Donald Wald, I think. I think I got that name right. I was a coach at Western Michigan at the time. And uh, we're playing them. Charlie takes a timeout, goes down to Anita, talk to his team. Uh, timeout ends, huddle breaks up. He goes to stand up and he collapses. And his heart stops. And for 18 minutes, he's on the floor with doctors and nurses and emergency personnel around him. And they were giving him CPR. His his heart stopped on the court. And for 18 minutes, they had to sit there and pump his chest during the middle of the game. And I'll never forget that day because Charlie Cole died on the floor there in front of us. And they brought him back to life. And um, I just I remember thinking to myself, uh, John Fay was a writer for the Cincinnati Inquirer at the time. And he called me after the game just to kind of talk through what I had had to do and deliver on the air. And uh, I, I just kept thinking to myself, his wife and his son and his daughter are listening to this broadcast. So I didn't want to say or speculate or do anything that I thought would, you know, affect them in any sort of negative light way. And so I, uh, you know, I was, I was real cognizant of that, but uh the game was delayed for a while. The team decided they want to pl- wanted to continue to play once they got word that it looked like he was, you know, going to be. I, I don't want to say okay, but that he was, you know, I, I guess at, at, at that point he was stable. And so they played, and Wally Zerbiak went for about thirty-seven. Uh, just took the team on his back, and they beat Western Michigan, and then had a great run, and then in the uh, MAC tournament made it all the way to the championship game. And uh, so that you know that that's another memory of Charlie Coles that I'll, that I'll always have, obviously and not necessarily a positive memory on the other than it turned out positive and that, uh, he was still, uh, still able to coach for years after that, uh, but just a quality guy, uh, you know, a guy that we that we miss every day. I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because James Whitford now is, is our yes. head coach here, and, and Whit will yeah. talk, I mean, endlessly about the fact that, you know, in, in the 18 seconds he was down, Whit will say it felt like it was 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and, and it was like the longest 
you know hour of his of his life um yeah. how, what do you say and, and how do you broadcast a situation like that when you don't know what's going on you know, uh, I, I just simply described what was happening. I did not say I did not say that they were delivering CPR. I, di- I just kept saying that medical uh, folks were attending to him, uh, and I, I tried not to speculate about what had happened. Uh, I, I just tried to be, and I, I didn't go to an. I'll be honest with you, I didn't go into a play-by-play mode of everything that they were doing to him. I just kind of spoke in generalities talked about where we were as far as the game was concerned, what had happened uh, to leading up to this. Uh, and then uh, I was getting, I was getting information, had a guy I was doing the games with, who was actually doing a really good job of updating me on the fact that I'm going to get this a little bit wrong. Cause it's been, you know, 22 years now, sure. uh, but uh, in the building at the time in Kalamazoo, we were really fortunate in that there was a cardiac surgeon. There was an emergency room nurse, you know, there were two other doctors. I mean, it was it was as if he had he he had had this happen in the in the best of all places uh, because they happened to be in the crowd at the time, uh, and so he could not. Uh, you know, he, these these folks immediately attended to him, and so I, I was getting that information. So I was sharing that. Uh, I was uh, getting updates on how the team was in the locker room and and how Coach Ray Martin, who stepped in and and uh, in his stead. Uh, how he was handling things, so that, that's that's kind of how we tried to uh, had, how we tried to move forward with it. All right, if I can uh, jump to something a little happier, um, let's yeah. uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about being the man instead of working for him. Um, yeah. Starting Red Voice LLC, um, what are you thinking when you do it in terms of I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take that leap of faith to go from being the guy that gets paid to the guy that's gonna you know put myself on the line? It was a total leap of faith. I was sitting at a board meeting. I was on the board of the uh, Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, which happens here in Fort Worth. And I was sitting on that board and I was a meet, in a meeting with a couple of the ESP and execs. And one of the ESP and execs says, as he's kind of rolling through the agenda for that day, he was saying, uh, you know, uh, game's going to be televised nationally on ESPN. Uh, ESPN radio has elected not uh, due to some scheduling conflicts to clear this game uh, this year. They're not going to produce this game. So we're going to, take those uh, national radio rights and we will put those out to bid uh, and we'll start that process. And as soon as he said that, <laughs> it was like a, it was like an, it was almost like a, uh, an involuntary motion. I, I, I really had never thought about that angle before, to be quite honest with you. It was a, but it was a total involuntary motion. My arm went straight up in the air and I said, I'll take them. <laughs> and he said, what? I said, I'll, I'll buy the national radio rights right now. And we're at a board meeting, and it was a little uncomfortable because those people didn't, you know. And he said, uh, uh, "Let's uh, let's let's visit after the meeting." I said, "Okay, but I'll take them." Uh, and so uh, after the meeting, we sat down, and I said, "I can do this. You, you know, you got to you got to have faith in me." That guy's name is Pete Durzis, who's an executive with ESPN, oh, who's yeah. been a mentor to me, and, and a lot of people know Pete. And Pete said, "Brian, I'm gonna give you a chance," and he did. He gave me a chance with one game. Then that one game became, became two games. Then the two games became four games. And then this year it's nine games. And so uh, I think we've proven to him that we can do it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I owe, I owe a lot to Pete Durses for just saying, oh, okay, well, give me a chance. Here you go, big boy. What'd you have to do? Uh, how do you start your own? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I was busy. Uh, you know, I was busy. Uh, this time of year is obviously busy. But then, you know, you, then you have to start with, okay, how am I going to distribute these games, which is the biggest thing. Uh, you know, the production, the production side of it's not that hard as far as, you know, being on site, coming up with a crew to, to, to get a game. OK, but where do we send it from here? Uh, and then how do we distribute it to other radio stations? And early on uh, in this partnership I, uh, or in this uh, deal, I, I partnered up with Premier uh, Distributing and Premier out of Los Angeles does a lot of Fox Sports. They do the Rush Limbaugh show. They do things like that. They're a syndicator. So. We partnered with them. They worked on uh, getting affiliates for me. I, I, I did some affiliate relations as well. And so we would produce the games and then send them to Premier, who would put them up on a satellite for distribution. Uh, we've, we've since sort of modified that as, uh, as things have grown. And uh, we, uh, we have a couple of affiliate relations guys that help us now. Uh, we've created our own database uh, of affiliates. We, uh, we distribute now through a company out of uh, Arizona called Skyview. So they put it up on satellite. Uh, 
and uh, so it's uh, it, you know it, it kind of continues to grow. But you have to do a couple of different things. One, you got to produce it on site. Then you have to distribute it to affiliates. You have to get the affiliates, uh, and then uh, and then comes the tough part, and that's the sales of it because you also have to sell it because every one of these little steps that we just talked about have a hard cost. So you got to be able to make enough money to to pay all those entities for the services they're providing for you, pay the guys that are working for you to do the game. Uh, and then you hope at the end of the day, you put a little scratch in your pot. So the sales effort is, uh, is the most important. And, and to be quite candid is the hardest uh, because you're not, you know, you're not dealing with something that's, uh, you know, ball state plays football and basketball, you know, for eight months a year. So you got something going on for eight months that you can sell radio into. Well, that's not the, that's not the case as far as these are, this is a two week window. So you got to get, you know, what you can for a, for a two week period. So the sales stuff is probably the hardest piece of the puzzle. Um, at any point after you had shot your hand up out of reflex, did you have a, Oh my God, what did I just do moment? No, my wife did that. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I didn't have that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I came home and told her, Hey, by the way, I just bought the national radio. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, was, uh, I'm speaking gibberish sure to begin with. Uh, but, uh, you know, I never did. I've never regretted a moment. I, it has been, it, you know, it, it is for the small percentage of time that it takes out of my life. Uh, it is the most fun that I have. Uh, and so I've never had a second thought. And, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to continue to expand uh, and we're looking for opportunities for, for stuff for the remainder of the year. How does that how does uh, that work? I mean, like, what do you how do you lay it out? Kind of walk me through building your own your own broadcasting business and, and, and the thought of growing it into getting to nine bowl games. And, and what kind of stuff do you go through? Well, I think there's a couple of things that you have to do. One, one is I've, I've been able to uh, uh, determine that I couldn't do it on myself. Uh, you know, as far as invoicing and all the back office stuff that takes place and just, you know, there's so many things that, uh, that go into this, that, that I was able to partner with a company out of West Virginia that, that brings that to the table. That was the first thing that you, you had to realize that, Hey, there, there may be an opportunity to partner with somebody else who's going to bring some expertise, uh, and some know-how to this, to make the life a little bit easier for me. And so we were able to do that with Pikewood sports and, and they've got a long history of, of being successful syndicators and, uh, and, pr- and production guys and so uh that's wor- that's worked out good so we we kind of lay out okay here's where we are as far as our events are concerned here's how we're staffing it here's how we're distributing it uh all right what are some other opportunities and so what we do then is just try to keep our eye open for other regular season games uh as far as college is concerned maybe venturing off into some of these one-off nfl games that you can bid on but then events as well we did the Advocare invitational this year which is a preseason basketball tournament okay. in orlando oh. Yeah, 12 teams, eight games. Did I get that right? Eight games, 12 teams, maybe? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Eight, eight, I'm not eight the teams, math 12 guy, games. Yeah. yeah, I think it's eight <laughs> teams, 12 games. Uh, but so we did that We did that entire run. Uh, I think you're going to see us bidding on some uh, some uh, basketball tournaments, postseason tournaments for conferences, for distribution, things oh, cool. like that. So, yeah, so that's what we're kind of looking, where we're looking to explain. Uh, what's been most fun about it? Well, I think I think just something growing something from scratch. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, I think there are two things. I, I would say that seeing how from its infancy it has grown to to now nine games and and hearing the finished product, you know, on a group of stations around the country or on satellite radio or tune in and just hearing how it sounds. I think that's that's rewarding. I think the other thing is this, and I'll, I'll be quite candid with you. Um, I've, I've been able to help other guys. You know, as far as Eric's career is concerned, you know, there's uh, a couple of three guys that are going to be doing games for us during bowl season that that uh, not because they're not talented enough. They're more than talented enough, uh, but may not have had an opportunity to do a national game sure. uh, to do a national telecast. And so uh, that that's really rewarding to me. They're friends of mine that I think are super talented uh, that just, you know, just because they don't live in New York doesn't mean they can't do the game. Sure. Uh, and, and they're really good at it. And so I, 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 I'm really excited about the opportunity to showcase them, and, and I hope it leads to other opportunities for them. I want to ask you a broad question just about broadcasting in general. Um, and I guess this goes to kind of running your own network now as well and, and having an eye for what, you know, you said, being able to listen to it and hear it. Um, what makes good uh, – well, I guess I can go in two directions, but uh, what makes good football and what makes good college basketball on the radio to you? What's a, what's a uh, good thing to listen to? Okay. I, I, when it, for football, for me, is there are two things that have to do. You, you, it, 
a, a football broadcast has to do two things. It has to entertain and it has to educate. Uh, and I think you can find that happy balance between the two, meaning there, there's, there's enough downtime. Not, we're not talking baseball, but there's enough downtime in a college football game that it can almost come across as two guys sitting on a bar stool talking. And, 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 that's, and that's what I want. I want there to be camaraderie amongst the guys who are describing the game. I, w- I want all the detail that you can give me. Not over detail, though. I think, you know, I think there's some guys I could roll off the list. I won't do it. Uh, of guys who I think over detail things. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I just think that they, they do it because they can. I don't find it entertaining. I, 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 wanna, I want description. I want the information that I need. I want down and distance and formation. And, and, but then I also want a little bit of color in it. You know what I'm saying? I, I want there to be some conversation. I want it to be conversational. I don't want you to be talking down to the listener. Uh, so I, I want it to be entertaining from that aspect. I wanted to educate too, and that I want that analyst to be able to give me something that I'm not normally going to get. Uh, that's where I think a guy, if you think about television, that's where I think a guy like John Gruden uh, is so good. Every game I watch that John Gruden does, I have learned something terminology, formation, some trick of the trade. There is something that I learn every time I listen to John Gruden. I want I want my analysts to do the same. Uh, so I think from a football perspective, it's that. In basketball, uh, you're allowed to be a little more descriptive. There's there's no question about it. But I want emotion as well in basketball. I want the emotion of the game. I want to know runs. You know, I want to know about the tide is turning. I want to know momentum in the uh, arena. I want to be able to tell that. You know, that's why uh, one of the things that uh, that we ask for out of our engineering crews on both football and basketball is, you know, we, we want terrific effects. Um, you know, it's it, it, it's almost like um, uh, the old Motown wall of sound that was behind the axe. Sure. You know, that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for in a production that crowd to sound bigger and more intense than it is uh and and sometimes that's hard to capture but i think you have to on radio uh to, to make it work you know in your, in your mind's eye so that's a couple of things that, that i think make a really good broadcast how often do you get to listen back to yourself uh and, every, and, and every listen game. for those things every game um, every game how uh I don't know why that was surprising. I do the same thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. what uh what's that like for you um, when you do it? Uh, it, it? It's um, it is um, cleansing. It is um, it's one of those cases where I uh, no one's harder on you than you. Yeah. You know uh, you, you know that no one can be truly constructive. Uh, because they're, you know, for what they're going to couch things a certain way. They're going to worry about how you react. I, I, no, you can go. That sucked, you know. Uh, and and you're not and, and you're not going to offend you. And so I think you have to be honest with yourself. And so that's that's what I try to be. Is I take go through and listen to every game, and I take a few notes, and or, or I'll, uh, you know, the, my wife is really good at pointing out catchphrases or hey, you said this like seven times, or you know, something like that. And I'll go through and I'll count and listen and make and say, oh sure enough why did I do that uh, well, what was going on in my head that day uh, and so I, I, I like to make notes to make sure that I don't do it again so I think it's important to go back and listen to your work I, I think you, I think you have to do that when did you get to the point where you kind of said to yourself like and I don't want this to sound conceited but like when you said to yourself I'm good like I, I feel like I can do this and I feel like when I go listen back to it uh, I'm at the point now where you know, people people want to listen to me because I feel like I can deliver. That that probably has happened very recently, uh, to be honest with you. Okay. And this is my 20th year at TCU, and my uh, I said 28th doing I think something like that. I'm doing Division One uh, football and basketball, and I, I yeah, that can't be right. By the way, it's got to be like my 26 <laughs> or so. I, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, I've been doing it a little too long. Say 25. Years. Uh, the uh, um, but it, but for for the longest time I didn't know, um, I, I you know I thought I was doing all the right things, but uh, I, you know after a while enough people tell you that I think it finally sits in and what you got to do is guard that though and make sure you know you don't become conceited or it gives you a big head or anything like that over sure. it. and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm not at that point I mean I think when you stop listening to yourself when you stop going back trying to get better stop correcting things stop trying to improve every year. I think that's when you when guys start to slip, and you and I have heard guys where that has happened before. But I, th- I think that um, I think it's only been in the last few years that that happened. Now I'll tell you, 
when I left Appalachian and went to Miami uh, and did Miami games, that's when I realized I was in the right business because doing app games, I'd gone to school there. I'd kind of, you know, it, 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 that was real comfortable. I knew all the players, I knew all the coaches. I'd known them even before I started doing play by play. I knew all of them. Sure. So there was a real comfort zone there. When I got to Miami, I didn't know anybody. You know, I didn't know any of the history. I didn't know any of the players. I didn't know any of the coaches. And you get thrown right into it, and you have to really cram and study and 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 be, uh, you know, all in, very intentional. Uh, and uh, I, th- I think once I realized uh, at Miami that I could do that. I realized I was in the right business. Uh, 2009 against Utah, I know you had laryngitis. Um, How would you know that? I, I, I found it. There was a YouTube something, I think. Um, oh, really? <laughs> but you were talking about the home elixir that you, you took. And <laughs> yeah. As somebody who uh, battled a cold last week and had to keep my voice from cracking when his team – Make Sports Center. Um, uh, it, it would be a great help to know what was in that. Uh, you know, I, uh, and I and I've got it written down on my computer. I don't have it right in front of me. I can tell you <laughs> kind of what it is. It is um, it is cayenne pepper. It's hot water. It's lemon juice. It's vitamin C. And I'm leaving out something, honey. Uh, but you have to drink. Uh, oh, and uh, 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 salt. And you have to you have to you have to uh, kind of gargle with it hot and drink what you can. Uh, and I tell you, it made, it made a huge, it, it got me through the game. It's the only time I've ever battled it throughout my career was one time. It's not like it's an annual thing, which thank knock on wood. Uh, but, uh, it got me through it. Uh, there's a guy named Mark Holtz who used to be the, uh, Rangers play by play guy here years ago, Texas Rangers. And his trick was blackberry wine. Ooh. Yeah. He said the blackberry wine or blackberry brandy. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Blackberry brandy would, uh, would would solve that problem for you i've never i've never ventured too far into that but uh uh the uh yeah that that was one of those where you know you just have to fight through it the best you can and uh i'll, I'll flip you that recipe because uh it's uh I've, i still have it on my computer just in case was it, what was that game like like did you want to it was, it was a big game out? to begin with yeah yeah it was a big game uh and so i wasn't gonna miss it uh but there comes a point where you do have to where you're gonna do an injustice to the to the listener and so I was trying to make sure that I wasn't doing an injustice to the listener because I thought it, if I couldn't if, if 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 I couldn't get through it if I couldn't if if it was going to be a tough listen I was going to punt I was going to let someone else do it uh, but but fortunately for me I was able to kind of fight through it and uh, uh, and and deliver in a big game and uh, you know I was I was lucky because I, I, I earlier in the week I didn't think I was going to be able to get through. It. Well, Brian, uh, I appreciate you spending some time with me, and I know uh, you've got eight bowl games and basketball season to prep for, or I guess nine bowl games with your own. Uh, so right. I, I will, uh, I'll let you get going, uh, but this was fun. So thank you for, uh, thanks for diving in and, uh, and detailing a little bit of your life for us. All right, let's do it again. All right, that's Brian Estridge joining us of the TCU Horned Frogs. I, a lot of really good stuff in there. I, I go back the, the, to the, the beginning of that and, and having to walk that line between being, you know, representative of TCU and being uh, a representative of those programs and uh, also doing the news talk thing and not sticking to sports, but being able to create that partition um, and have people respect him for that, I think is really interesting and really well executed in, uh, in Brian Estridge's career. And also the Red Voice production aspect of it. I mean, how many of us out there have been like, I'd like to call this kind of game this level game i'd like this kind of platform this level stage uh brian estridge just went out and was like you know what i got that (laughs) well i'll take care of it um i kind of think it's like the it's like the albert brenneman moment like as he was describing it in my head i was thinking the albert brenneman moment in hitch when when he just jumps up in the boardroom meeting and (laughs) and says you know what allegra cole you can invest in your friend's business and i quit and he storms out of the boardroom uh, that's what i was picturing when when brian said his hand just shut up and he said i'll take the rights to the bowl game um it worked out for albert brenneman uh, <laughs> and it has certainly worked out for brian estridge as well uh, so again many thanks to uh to brian for joining us here on the pod this week um and that was on a whim too by the way i was driving in the car with our athletic director at ball state uh mark sandy 
And Brian's name came up because they worked at Miami, Ohio together. You heard him talk about Miami uh, in the interview. They worked at Miami, Ohio together. And and Mark mentioned Brian's name and I called Brian and and we had Brian on the pod. And I'm I'm glad it all worked out that way because certainly one of the more unique conversations we've had in terms of things we were able to cover uh, and a good one as well. Uh, That'll do it, though, for us here for 2017. Uh, Our full calendar year of podcasts, first full calendar year of podcasts in the book began this thing back in the summer of 2016 but 2017 the first full year we churned out an episode every single week so uh thank you as always um for clicking subscribe download rating reviewing the pod i'm not gonna you know like ask for ratings and reviews this week because you guys have been awesome with it like the ratings and reviews and tweets have like poured in the last few weeks and it's like oddly self-aggrandizing for me so I kind of got uncomfortable with it for a second. I was like, hey, maybe I should stop asking. Uh, but but if you do want to tweet about it, uh, I'm not going to stop you. So um, please do. Uh, tweet away. Rate away. Um, 2018 for broadcasting. Uh, best of luck to everybody in, in terms of goals, in terms of resolutions. I know this is kind of that time of year where everybody decides what they would like the next 365 days to look like um so hopefully everybody has uh kind of their their chops licked here uh, getting ready to to start 2018 i know my january and february and march uh, are going to be super exciting uh a lot going on for me personally over the next couple of months so i'm psyched to dig into 2018 um not that it is not that you care but like we'll, we'll get into that later um but uh, I got a lot going on in 2018, so uh, I'm looking forward to it um, big time. Uh, that being said, we are out of time. So uh, we'll uh, drop the ball on Sunday night and uh, kick off 2018 and be back here uh, for episode number one of 2018, episode number 82 overall with Rich Burke from the Pac-12 Network. He is our guest next week, and Schatz, uh, Pac-12 Network broadcaster, follows us the week after that as well. A couple of good ones on tap. Thanks again to Brian. Thanks to you. My name is Joel. This is Marshmallow. He doesn't know we're playing his song, um, but thanks to him as well. We're out.